uh, I, I've seen over and over again what I believe to be absolutely true. Mr. Cook dearly loves his children. Uh, if, if that were the case, he'd have given up a long time ago, given the many, many obstacles that uh, Ms. Spar has thrown in the way over the years trying to uh, uh, interfere with Mr. Cook having a reasonable parental relationship with his children. And, and frankly, what I'm seeing is uh, direct parental alienation by Ms. Spar. Uh, she is instilling fear in her children. She is telling them things that they should never need to hear. She is instilling fear in them. Uh, and she she's done damage as a result of that. Kids don't need to hear one parent trashing the other. And Mr. Cook, you're guilty of that. You're guilty of trashing their mother to them. Uh, uh, she's guilty of trashing you to them. All it does is create harm. Uh, it, and it's been successful. Uh, uh, Isabel has been uh, as, as alienated as I've seen a child become. And Chloe's rapidly on the way to being that herself. Uh, uh, the, uh, I mean, it's just plainly wrong. So how do we fix it at this point? Clearly, these girls have been alienated against Mr. Cook. Uh, they believe that he's a danger to them, but they don't believe that based on truth. They believe that based upon all of the fear that their mother has instilled in them. Uh, I don't doubt that Mr. Cook loses his cool on occasion and raises his voice, but he's not a danger to either one of these children. He never has been. He never will be. The danger is, is what mom is doing. Ma'am, if you unmute your phone, if you unmute your phone again, I am going to kick you out of this hearing. Do not do it. Is that clear? So how do we get off this point and get to some semblance of a reasonable parenting time schedule and a reasonable relationship for Mr. Cook with his children? Um, I... I, what, what I want to do, uh, the, the re referral to the healing place, to Dr. Shannon Lauder, absolutely I wanted it followed up on. I want counseling set up for both of the girls through Dr. Lauder's office. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to schedule, and Mr. Cook, you're not going to like this, but give it time. There's a goal in mind. I am going to order that a healing place supervise a couple of visits. I want I want them to see what I believe to be the case, that these girls have no reason to fear you other than what mom has put into their heads. And she's been hard at work doing that. Every chance she gets, she poisons these girls towards you, Mr. Cook, every time. So uh, the first step we're going to do, I want there to be two supervised visits with each uh, daughter separately. I do not want them together. They need to be separately. After those two visits, I want the parenting time supervisor at a healing place to give the court a report as to how those visits went. I also want the girls immediately enrolled in counseling through whoever it is Dr. Lauder assigns from the healing place so that they can start that process. I want the uh, person who's doing the super or doing the therapy to involve both parents at a time and under such circumstances as the therapist sees fit. I anticipate going to a far more regular parenting time schedule. Part of the problem here is the extent to which these girls have been withheld from Mr. Cook. And at, while they're being withheld, they're being fed lies by their mother. 
exaggerations, just over the top, outright parental alienation. So I am going to get busy to write this order. Uh, I'm going to warn you, Ms. Barr, each time the child doesn't go to a visit is going to cost you a day in jail. And I'm going to stand behind that and make sure your girls know if they're telling you, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Honey, if you don't go, mama's going to have to go to jail. You make sure they know that because it's going to happen. All right. That concludes our hearing. You'll be getting a written order.